I now call upon our distinguished guest, Mr. Anshu Gaur, Country Head Amdocs, to chair the next session. Mr. Anshu Gaur has been with the Amdocs management since 2007. Prior to joining Amdocs, Sir has held key leadership positions in organizations like EDS Emphasis, Sabre Incorporation, Larson and Tubro Limited, and Pertec Computers Limited. Mr. Gore holds a master's degree in, in industrial and systems engineering from the University of Arizona, Tucson, and a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering from the National Institute of Technology, Suratkal, India. Sir has been the recipient of the prestigious CXO Award as the best business head of the year. Sir, it is an honor to have you amongst us. I would request you to kindly preside over the session. All right, yeah, I was wanting for a, uh, looking for a caller mic to move around the place, but it sounds like that's a challenge. Um, being the third speaker, uh, officially the third speaker, but literally the fourth speaker, because uh, Professor Patel did the speaking for literally all the presentations that you will see. Uh, it's a tricky thing. And uh, you know, the two thoughts which go through your mind when you are the third or the fourth speaker. One, why didn't I think of this before? And two, do I have the time to change my presentation? And the answer to both of them is uh, probably no, and you are stuck with what you have. What I'd like to do is, uh, you know, if I go back to just listening to Professor Patel, one of the thoughts was, maybe I'll throw away the presentation, like Mr. Goyle did. He didn't go through this presentation for the same reasons. Um, <laughs> And I thought what I'll do is, is, is maybe answer the questions raised by Professor Patel. And, and you know what? Things were going fine till a few other questions were raised by Mr. Goyal. So, so I'm in a situation where I'll try to answer some of those questions in, in my perspective. And, and, and just as a disclaimer to both uh, uh, Professor Patel and uh, Mr. Goyal, I will not talk about the bottom of the pyramid. Uh, for those of you who heard me speak uh, a couple of years ago, uh, I talked a little bit about the bottom of the pyramid, and I felt that maybe uh, repeating that would, uh, would, would be duplication. But then came along Professor Patil, who talks about the power at the bottom of the pyramid, so we'll take it offline with you, sir, and we will uh, cover that. So what I want to talk about is, is more in terms of digital life. And one thing when I... I try to do when I come to an educational institution is try to stick to the theme. The theme for you is telecom transformation, envisaging the next growth, next areas of growth or growth areas. So I try to stick to that theme. And with that, I said that we will talk about digital life and driving digital life as the enabler or the vehicle which is driving the future growth. So from my perspective, and the company I represent, we believe service provider is the center of the universe. We believe in the service provider, and we believe that they are at the center of the universe. But that's changing, and I'll talk about what the change is. And if you remember, Mr. Goyal talked about what is driving the change. His view was that change is being driven by customer needs. He alluded to the fact that customer wanted the internet, uh, the customer wanted uh, mobile transactions. Uh, so customer needs were driving the change in the industry. I would say that it's both. In some cases, change is being driven by the customer needs. In other cases, it's technology and innovation. Because in the end, there's a business who's out there to make money. And the business comes up with innovative ways to make money. And Apple is a good example. Tablets have been around for 15 years. They've been around for more than 15 years, but there was no use of a tablet. They changed the paradigm. So, so our proposition or my proposition is that, well, one can argue which came, comes first, but in reality, both of them play a role in, in the growth. And I think if I step back and think in terms of the inflection point around what we see today, 
And the inflection point, and it's always debatable, from our perspective is the enablement of wireless data. Because internet boom was wired data, right? It was wired and it had all the applications, but there was a boom. Now one can argue that boom became bust because of the fact that maybe it was too early. Maybe some of the things which were being talked about was before their time. But we believe that wireless data is really the key inflection. And a rather tacky next slide, which says that, well, the genie is out of the bottle now. So the genie is out of the bottle, and wireless data is out there. Yes, it might have the security loopholes that, uh, uh, that Mr. Goel talked about, but it's out there. Now let's deal with it. So I'll try to deal with it in, uh, in three elements. One, what I call the brave new connected world. We are living in a connected world, and this is a brave new world. Let's talk about that a little bit. Then I'll talk about the transformation response that is expected or that can be a For me is the fact that we will talk more in terms of the service provider role in this and how they can play a role in the connected world and help with the transformation, transformation both of the industry and their own transformation. So with that said, uh, let's move on to, so there are two, two things which are driving, like I talked about earlier, the consumer, the customer need, and the technology and innovation, and that's leading to the connected world that I talked about. So let's talk about what's going on with the customer. The customer today, and we, I will introduce the lady in the center in a minute, but I'm just uh, talking of her, uh, of her right now in second person. Uh, the lady in the middle is... Uh, has an interweave life. Interweave life, which is about work. Work, they are use, she's using tools which are depicted in the circle there, and many of you are, uh, you have, many of us in the industry are using those tools. At the same time, she's at home, she's also using a bunch of tools, whether it's the, it's the photo or it's the, or the, or the eye dash as someone uh, used earlier. You're using a lot of tools and, 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 and things of that kind to work at home. And then you are remote. I was, in, uh, I was uh, taking a vacation in Hong Kong uh, two weeks ago, and it was exactly that. I was doing home, and I was doing work, and I was using tools. And my life, and I, I would say a life of a lot of people today, at the quote-unquote the top of the pyramid, and by the way, the top of the pyramid and the bottom of the pyramid to me also is a blurring Space. It's about economic upliftment, and technology is allowing the economic upliftment. So when is the borderline, or when you become a bit higher in the pyramid is a tricky discussion. But bottom line is that customers' lives are becoming interweaved. On the other side, you see industry shifts. You see shifts in the industry where you see the world of today, which is uh, smart handsets, where you're going tomorrow is trillion of trillions of connected devices, and I talked about trillions of connected devices in my last uh, visit here. You see technology which was alluded to by Mr. Goel about 2G, 3G. Well, technology will keep changing, whatever be the vested interest behind it. And we will talk about 4G and LTE, and how LTE will enable voice is a different discussion. And you've got the competitive situation. You've got the competitive situation where you've got uh, uh, interesting set of players, and the Players are also recognizing that its competition is the way to go. So you see on one side the change driven by the consumer or, and the other side the shifts in the industry. And I think the, this connected world is leading to a data explosion. And I'll just quote some numbers here because it's always, uh, you know, you quote numbers to prove a point. Uh, whether you cross-check it later is a different discussion, but this is a reliable source. The growth in data traffic is 39,000% from 2009 to 2014. That's the volume of growth in data traffic. Now you know why I talked about the genie in the beginning. That's the volume of growth which is being driv driven by connected devices, by personalization, more mobile devices and smartphones, and content apps. And I think this connected world is really what the operators today have to deal with. 
with the explosion of data. And I think even Jangu talked about the, the fact that if you look at the total volume of email messages, and he talked about the Facebook and the other applications, he was trying to draw a correlation that the volume of data traffic is, is almost the same, essentially saying that the data traffic is growing. So from that perspective, what we believe is probably I've tried to make the case that there's a need for transformation, that that's the reality the service providers have to deal with. And then to, if that is indeed the reality, or at least you can be with me for the next 20 minutes and believe it, then the service providers have to go through transformation. So let's talk a little bit about the response. So let's uh, go back to the customer. What is the customer looking for more and more? And, and there's a vested interest for the service provider to understand this. The customer is asking for me. I, you know, let's face it, we are becoming more and more self-focused. I would like to get offers about me. I would not like to get offers about all the employees in Amdocs. Not that I will complain, because there are several of us here. But I would like to get offers about me. And you know what? Service provider has the ability to do that. In, in effect, the response from the transformation point of view from a service provider is personalization to the segment of one. Now, personalization to the segment of one with 800 million subscribers, even if you discount the, the duplication and so on and so forth, let's go with 600 million subscribers, it's not easy. And it's a challenging. So even if it is not to the segment of one, segment of one meaning to the individual, at least some kind of a grouping is essential and is clearly a demand from the customer. And wh why is it a demand from the customer? It's a demand from the customer because in the end, the service provider and anybody in that ecosystem is out there to profit and make money. And you believe that, you know, you can drive the effectiveness of a revenue campaign by over 200% if you are giving more personalized information and more personalized offers. So that's a customer ask. Another customer ask is, I want my service my way. I really want my service my way. And, you know, I'm not being selfish when I do that. You are a service provider, you're providing me service, and there was a, an example given by Jangu about the fact that a lot of you decided to change your provider I'm not going into, into which provider because as I walked, came into a symbiosis, my signal went down. Uh, but that's a different discussion again. So, so what I say is that, that you want your service in your way. And there's nothing wrong with it. And as an entity who's providing you service, it's essential that I support it. And one possible response is I do multi-channel support and alignment. And all these things need to come together. SIP was given as an example earlier in one of the presentations as the enabler. But bottom line is all these things have to come together for one to respond to that customer ask. Now let me introduce Eliza. She is the person who was there in the picture. And uh, Eliza has got certain attributes. And you know, the world has changed so much. Uh, the attributes are uh, probably going to be defined by your UID. Um, in the U.S., it's the social security number, but in today's world, in a connected world, your definition is, uh, hey, you're using an email, IN, IM, VPN, you're using a corporate cloud, you've got smartphones, you've got Twitter followers, you've got a Facebook profile, and how many people are following you there, and how many friends do you have in LinkedIn, your business connections. And guess what? Eliza is... Uh, making travel arrangements on Expedia, or make my trip for uh, contextual purposes. She checks out destinations on TripAdvisor. She makes restaurant reservations on reservations.com. And she wants to comment on her hairdresser on Yahoo. Now, she's expecting her service provider to live in this same world as she is living. And guess what? If indeed that is true, a complex picture comes up which talks about for someone to enable all that stuff. This is just a simple depiction of what needs to happen for all that to be enabled. And then Eliza to get a good customer holistic experience. 
And these are just, you know, whether it's the channels or it is the OTT and traditional service players, touch points, and so on and so forth. So again, talking about the fact that you, the service provider then has to manage the complexity which enables that. As if that wasn't enough, Eliza has another avatar, as the Americans call it, or avatar as we would call it. Another avatar, the other avatar for her is that she actually happens to work as well. And at work, she's probably using the same device, but uses cloud-based collaboration tool to finalize a customer proposal. Uses LinkedIn to identify and recruit her next assistant. Accesses candidates' Facebook page and uses Skype to do the video interview. Again, discounting the termination of that VoIP call. We keep that aside. This is what, uh, this is what the other avatar of Eliza is demanding from the service provider. Now, to meet that need, the service provider has to manage the enterprise complexities which were being alluded to earlier, which is, well, cloud services. I need to take care of IP networking. I need to have connected devices, and so on and so forth. In the end, the expectation from the service provider is enable, global, virtual, mobile, and yes, simple. Services to Eliza. And again, this is just a depiction of the company, complexities that could exist in the organization when the service provider does that because Hey, multiple, this is a multinational organization, multiple countries, multiple departments, and so on and so forth. So, if you thought that this was just uh, Eliza who is uh, having this uh, predicament, we, we, we conducted, as Amdocs, we conducted a global survey of uh, 4,700 customers, including in India. And uh, we, we decided to, we did it with Coleman Parks. And we also had an anthropologist with us to help us with the interpretation. And when we asked these 4,700 customers, what are you wanting? And what we found was, these are the kind of things that customers are wanting. They're wanting connected consumer electronics. They're wanting personal clouds. Again, personal clouds were also talked about. Personal clouds in this case would be, hey, I want to store my pictures. I want to store my music, I want to store my video. Mobile payments, like we talked about, uh, relevant in our uh, context. M Health. So these, buying tickets obviously. So these are the kind of things that Eliza's global counterparts are looking for to use this connected world, to leverage the connected world to do these types of things. And then, the good part, Eliza's counterparts are willing to pay we ask the question, are you willing to pay more? And what they say, and we ask the question, what are you willing to pay for? And what we find is this is the list of things that they're willing to pay for. They're willing to pay for use of all services and application from any device, anywhere. They're willing to pay for better network quality. Again, going back to the Symbiosis Drive example. Better network quality, you're willing to pay for it. You're willing to pay more if the quality of the service is now, I think, in a cost-conscious environment, it gets a bit more tricky, but bottom line is that you are telling us, um, all of us are telling uh, this survey that, uh, yes, they're willing to pay for better, better network quality, you're willing to pay for data bundles. So, so the good part of the story is that the customers are willing to pay. So in the end, from the transformation perspective, I look at that example, then uh, the, the, the service provider has got to deal with this complexity where on the left-hand side, we, you see that uh, the highly connected users you know, overlap between personal and business. And then you talked about how the, the, the change in the, in the, you call that home, but the connected consumer, if you will, is, is driving that. And, and what the service provider has to do is to give that end to an experience. So in summary, I would say that what is expected of service providers today is to do more of the network. We heard from Mr. Goyal, or it was uh, probably Professor Bartel who asked the question, how much have the service provider paid for in terms of bandwidth and 3G? 
and they paid for a lot. Now, what they have to do is monetize those assets. So they've got to do more with smarter networks. They have to do more with smarter networks. They have to make sure there's utilization of the existing bandwidth. They've got to make sure, you know, and, and if you think about it, bandwidth is perishable commodity. Uh, if it's lost, it's lost. You paid for it up front, but it's lost if you don't use it. You've got to do more with multi-dimensional convergence. Convergence used to be fixed mobile. Convergence today is completely different. Convergence is, uh, is business and consumer. Convergence is prepaid and postpaid. Convergence, by the way, is also bottom of the pyramid and top of the pyramid. It's also convergence. Do I separate them out and deal with uh, the bottom of the pyramid completely differently? That's also a thought. You are a commoditized pro service provider to me. I'm providing to the bottom of the pyramid commoditized service, so I will separate them out. Guess what? The person gets uh, richer because they're using uh, tools for economic upliftment, and suddenly you're confused whether they belong to the up or the bottom. So there's convergence of that kind one has to deal with. And then you've got to deal with providing the anywhere customer experience that we talked about. And the good story, like we just heard, is that you, as a provider, need to do all that to provide a com competitive differentiation and then also leverage new revenue streams. And I'll talk quickly about some of the opportunities that we exist, and we'll use some use cases to, say, to see them. So let's take an experience model use case. Uh, there is Arun Kumar. Uh, he's uh, buying uh, certain uh, two on-demand videos for uh, his children. The kids start watching the movie, but you know it's too late, and they start to watch that on the, in the room on the PC. But you know what? The movie's still not complete, and they're going to Disney World next morning. And uh, it can be in uh, Hong Kong, Disney World. They're going to Disney World in the morning. And you know what? They decide to finish the movie while driving to Disney World. Customer is exp expecting an experience. At the back end, to enable that, significant opportunities, complexity, but opportunities. You have to deliver the entertainment experience, which is the output that the service provider is expected to deliver. Multiple devices, laptop, PC, CV sets, in-car DVD, content stored in a family cloud, because they didn't buy the, it, it can be bought through the air. Authentication per user, you want to make sure that the same person is uh, using it and they're authorized to use it. Device abstraction for viewing multiple devices. So if you think about it, to service the Kumar family, these are the things that you see in the center that the service provider has to do. And at the next level of detail, at the operational level, you see a listing of things that the service provider has to have in place to enable that. But the customer is expecting is, is, is going to demand and starting to demand this. Uh, another use case, very similar. In this case, uh, you know, we hear about Amazon. This could be Amazon. Sony is starting to come out with uh, an offering where you buy the Sony device and, uh, and you watch, uh, watch movies on it. Uh, and then you can share the movies and then you can... Uh, you can uh, so I'm, I'm going to sp not spend too much of time on it, but give you another example of where the service provider can enable a partner the partner either being you know, someone like an Amazon or a partner being someone like a Sony. And they're enabling the partner, and in that process, they're providing services to the device provider in Sony, and then they've got to do certain things to ensure that they are able to provide that. Now, this is a revenue stream. You don't become Sony. They have the content, but you are providing a quality of service to Sony, not to the end consumer. The customer is owned by Sony, but you are enabling that, and that's a revenue opportunity for you. And at the bottom, you will see the, some of the operational requirements that are essential for that to happen. Connected home. This is another thing which is coming up, which is uh, gaining steam in the developed markets, which eventually gets, gets to us. You know, the, the, the convergence of our uh, flatter world is means that, again, the top of our pyramid in India, which is the 250 million subscribers or 250 million people or 200 million people, get things as quickly as, uh, as someone in the developed market. 
This could be security, energy, health, automation, and there is a lot of stuff going on in there. You talk about energy. You talk about generation of uh, solar power which I can feed into the grid. Right? Theoretically, you can, which is solving the other challenges we have as a world, which is about green and everything else. To enable that, again, you've got uh, more service providers. In some cases, service providers are getting into that business that I will provide a connected home. And then on the other side, you've got the OTT players, over-the-top players, who are getting into the business as well. Uh, energy control being done by GE and power meter from Google. So, so you see that, again, this is an opportunity now. It can be depending upon, and you see two ways where the service providers are doing it. One, they're themselves getting into that vertical to provide that connected home capability. And on the other side, you have the OTT players who are going in, and they can enable the over-the-top players to help do that. A use case in terms of mobile health. There's a person who has, um, has, uh, has uh, needs monitoring, is a diabetic, needs monitoring of uh, their uh, diabetic situation. And there's a device which can monitor that. She's on a vacation. She finds out that uh, she's got uh, higher glucose levels. The device picks it up. The device transfers that information to their healthcare provider who calls her telling her that, you know what, you need to go to this hospital in Singapore to get yourself checked up because there's an urgency around it. So that's another example. And again, to enable that, we'll skip through it. Opportunity, but complexity, which can be leveraged or harnessed by the service provider. So in summary, what are we saying? One, I'm saying, and we are saying, market dynamics are driving towards the evolution of the connected world. And the market dynamics are both the consumer dynamics and the industry dynamics. Consumer expectations are becoming more sophisticated. Make no mistake about it. And there is a fear that the service providers are losing control. And this was alluded to what is a service provider was the question which was asked earlier. Is it just a marketing company? Or is it just a, you know, a front end to something else? We, we don't believe that. We believe service provider has the ability, but they've got to transform. Lines are blurring between the public and the business, or the private and the business personas. And managing the end-to-end -end experience is a significant opportunity for the service provider. No one else can do it. No one else can do it is our proposition. We don't believe no. Google, great company, can't do it. Apple, great company, can't do it. Apple is going to rely on Aircell, who's a platinum sponsor here, uh, to deliver the service, right? Unless they decide to do something, and you know, one can start uh, reading papers about why is Google buying Motorola and Mo Motorola Mobility and so on. Those are good questions to ask, but you will find out there's another reason which, which we believe they bought uh, Motorola, but that's a different discussion again. Lines are blurring, but the opportunity exists for the service provider. Current business models need evolving, and I talked about some of the evolution that probably needs to take place on the business models. And then finally, I had to get that in there. It is essential, and you have it here at the very bottom, by the way. Integrating and migrating OSS and BSS is key. Uh, if you look at all the slides at the bottom, the operational level to enable everything that is happening at the higher level is the OSS BSS infrastructure. And that is instrumental in driving this journey in a most cost effective way. So that's what I wanted to cover. If there are questions, I'll be happy to take them, but that's our view of the digital life. That's okay. Yeah, so it sounds like we're running out of time, so we'll take questions. I'll be around if you have questions. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, sir, for giving us insights on digital life and its future growth, which can act as a genie in the telecom world. We are grateful for you for inspiring us to think about the future of data traffic, which will surge in the connected digital world. It was indeed a thought-provoking session. I now invite my colleagues to felicitate Sir with a memento as a token of our gratitude and appreciation.
Thank you, sir.